Okay, so next thing I wanted to show with hair, I'm going to go back to my uh, my monkey guy here I've been working with. But before I do that, I just wanted to touch on on some of the modeling of this guy for a second. Uh, one thing uh, that's been a big trend in the industry is people are shifting to subdivision surfaces more. Though a lot of people in California are still uh, in the world of NURBS. And I just wanted to show, uh, touch on at least one of my uh, thoughts about the advantages of moving to subdivision surfaces, especially in XSI. What it allows you to do is have a variable resolution. Because the XSI subdivisions handle, handle triangles really well, you can go in here on the eye of your character and you can add all kinds of detail and uh, model every wrinkle in here. One of the nice things about modeling wrinkles, as opposed to putting them on texture map, is you can control whether the, the fat or the fold of the wrinkle goes over and in where it bulges out, whether it bulges inwards, rather than just treating uh, the wrinkle as a, a push on a single direction on the normal. And it, and it gives you more... Um, it gives you more artistic control over, over the wrinkles itself. And what subdivisions allow you to do is go in and add that division uh, level of detail and really control uh, where the wrinkles are ending. And you don't need a lot of geometry uh, where, where there's not a lot of detail happening. And then things can be very sparse in other areas of the mesh. So it's, it's, it's kind of like a, a, a density strategy. And the fact that subdivision services in XSI are, are so fast and uh, really capable of handling triangles through modeling and through something uh, like texture interpolation where uh, you get a lot of uh, fat, uh, fat kind of smearing of the UVs uh, in, in other applications. So uh, next thing I want to go into is hair here. That's, that's the topic of the moment. So I'm going to take my monkey, my monkey friend here. And uh, I didn't mean to have the front of the face selected. So I'll unselect that. Did someone turn on extended component mode on my computer? OK, so I'm going to go over here and apply hair. And so one of the first things uh, on this version is that we've added symmetry. So if you go in here and take the hair and you start to say, OK, so let's start to pull these around with uh, proportional modeling, for example. So off the bat here, they're moving around. Prior, you could apply symmetry map to a mesh. Now you can go in and apply it to hair. So if I go property, symmetry map, uh, where is it? Symmetry map, applies a symmetry map. And now off the bat, it basically it gives you the choice. No symmetry now, go turn on symmetry, and I have symmetrical manipulation, which is great. This, uh, I'm sure every hairdresser in the world wishes they had this tool. <laughs> Bob, Bob thinks hairdressers love, would love this. <laughs> he thinks we should start a new company. <laughs> or maybe not. Okay, so next thing we can do is we added the stretching mode. You want what, Bob? Mullet. He wants mullets. So in our new uh, mullet factory tool, you can go in and turn on uh, stretching mode. So if I start to pull out the hair here, you can see the stretching mode. This is something uh, hairstyles would want as well. You can go in and pull, actually pull the hair out. So if I'll go change the uh, radius of my pulver, the Wolverine, and I'm going to get my uh, Wolverine monkey dude and pull out the hair. And so you can see uh, that's, that saves a lot of time when modeling, too. Sometimes you want to pull that out. So another area we put a lot of work into is uh, actually rigging hair. So rigging hair comes up all the time. Uh, I've worked on tons of productions where you want to do something uh, non-standard, and you don't want the you you want to be able to wire the hair. You're doing braiding. You're doing some kind of weird hair. I don't know creature attacking people or what whatever uh, you and uh, the art director are up to. Uh, you can come in here and uh, start to draw some curves. So we'll come in and draw curves, or maybe you are the art director. Actually, I don't want to be in symmetry mode. So I'll go draw another curve here, a couple curves for hair. So you can go in and, and uh, basically do your own thing. You're, you're, you're not bounded by uh, using the, the hair that comes from the mesh. And prior, uh, you can apply dynamics to that. So basically, we, we've, clo we've closed that problem. You don't have to do all kinds of tricks to uh, get that out. So I'm going to go pull sculpt a shape a little bit. And OK, so let's say that's our hair profile. Just go here from curves. And what's nice, you can just go select this 
and go dynamics. I turn on apply dynamics. So I, I went through dynamics in a little bit of detail earlier, but what is what's nice here is uh, it all it all just works. And I can tell you, if I had this a year ago, I could have saved <laughs> hours and hours and days and days of time. So.